welcome to the Beyond Barriers podcast. If you're an ambitious woman who wants to dominate your career, then you are in the right place. This podcast is co-hosted by Nikki Barua, digital innovator, serial entrepreneur, author, and speaker. And Monica Marquez, ex-Googler, diversity expert, and senior corporate leader. From inspiring stories to cutting-edge strategies, you'll learn how to develop the skill set, mindset, and tool set to get future ready fast and accelerate your success. Welcome to the Beyond Barriers Habits and Hacks show. I'm Monica, your host for today's episode. It's less than two weeks to the end of the year, and we're in the midst of the holiday season, a time for celebration, community, giving, and reflection. And as I begin to reflect on the past year, a year that has been marked one for the history books on many fronts, I wanted to take this opportunity to reflect on a year through somebody else's eyes and understand how they're framing and reflecting in preparation for the new year. So with that in mind, Nikki, I'd love to ask you a few questions and get your perspective and learn from you your best practices to set yourself up for success in the future. How about that? Sounds great to me. Thanks for uh, asking me these questions. Awesome. So let's start with this question, okay? What was something you did this year that you will remember for the rest of your life? Hmm. Well, as you mentioned, this has truly been um, probably the most memorable year uh, in a century. Mm -hmm. And for most of us in our lifetimes, we've never had such a perfect storm of things that have happened. Um, And my big... Uh, framing of it, it was don't waste a crisis. Mm, Yes. And the reason I say that is, you know, within every crisis, there is opportunity. Um, Mm -hmm. Sometimes that opportunity is an opportunity for growth. Sometimes it's an opportunity for greater compassion for yourself and for others. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's an opportunity for better alignment, something that you needed to do that you kept procrastinating and you finally jumped in and did that. But in every crisis, there is an opportunity. And when I think about this year, um, you know, we launched Beyond Barriers in Mm -hmm. February. And only a few weeks after that, the whole world shut down. Yes. And in that moment, I know we all, you know, all of us on the team kind of went through that moment of, uh, just sort of feeling stunned and shocked and deer in headlights. Yeah. So there was that moment of, oh my gosh, now what? You mm-hmm. know, we barely just launched. Um, and this crisis, as you, you know, in that time, it was pretty clear it wasn't just going to be a two week shutdown. It wasn't all going to go away and get better in two weeks. Mm-hmm. Could get fairly long drawn out, could be six months, 12 months, 18 months. Who knows what might come off it? And the uh, original business model that we had for the company required Mm -hmm. in-person services and experiences, uh, live events, conferences, you know, working with clients hands-on and so forth, none of which was remotely possible in a pandemic. Right. And I could sense on the team that there was a, you know, there was that feeling of, panic and almost dread and uh, a little bit of that, gosh, there's no chance we'll survive. Right. (laughs) And um, in that moment, I knew that uh, this, while this was an absolutely unexpected crisis, um, we shouldn't be wasting it. It also provided us an opportunity to reinvent, Mm -hmm. reimagine the future come up with completely different ideas and possibilities because at a time when so much was going wrong, the world needed new solutions because the old ways that were the norm Mm -hmm. no longer worked in these kind of disruptive times. And so um, it was truly an opportunity for us to step into that gap Mm -hmm. and provide the kind of solutions that would be transformative, that would be inspiring, Mm -hmm. and uh, would be exactly what would um, move the world forward, not just ourselves. And Mm -hmm. so 
when everyone else seem to be, you know, focused on hunkering down, mm -hmm. you know, making that decision to say, no, yes. actually, we're going to double down. We're not hunkering down. We're doubling down. And we're going to completely pivot, figure out a new path and um, have a, and crystallize a much bigger vision because nothing mobilizes a group of people more than coming together and uniting around a mm -hmm. common cause and yes. a bigger purpose and a mission that is greater than yourself. And that um, is something I'll always remember in that moment in early March of um, gaining that clarity, making that decision and bringing everyone in the team together around that to say, you know, um, we're not hunkering down, we're doubling down. Yes. Let's not waste a good crisis. Absolutely. And, and that is actually really memorable for, for me when you describe that, as I remember the energy and the excitement that you were like, okay, this is an opportunity. And uh, I just know that that made me, it was, it was infectious. And so I remember I was that deer in headlights and then thought, okay, all right, I ha we have direction now and let's double down. So yeah. that was something that I think that you did that really did move us forward. And I can't thank you enough for it. Well, I think it's, it's, um, something that um, for anyone in their lives, it's something to think about that you can predict what might happen and you can often control what might come your way. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is how you respond to it. Mm -hmm. And your mindset, your approach, um, and your resourcefulness in times of crisis can often turn what seems like a really bleak, dreary situation into hope and optimism and contribution. Mm -hmm. Because yes. when everyone is struggling, someone needs to step up and show the way and provide a path. And, and that is an opportunity available to each of us in any crisis. I love that. So my next question for you is, what was something you felt was really hard for you to do at the beginning of the year? but now comes really easy to you. <laughs> um, I would say definitely the podcast or anything with media, whether it's mm, live yeah. videos or blogging, the newsletter and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that was once we made that decision that we're gonna double down and um, really turn this into a digital platform that democratizes access to resources, um, for women in the workplace and our mission of accelerating women in leadership. Mm -hmm. um, there were things that we could do that were, you know, part of our services and products that we provide. But beyond that, part of that mission was also being able to reach a, a, a truly global audience mm -hmm. uh, who we could help and inspire and share um, powerful stories from top leaders um, who've achieved great things and, and really give that platform that allows us to connect between the inspiring leaders and, you know, women around the world that are look, looking for that kind of inspiration and instruction. Right. And it became pretty clear that one of the best ways for us to do that was building a media platform. Mm -hmm. um, and because ideas travel faster than you know, <laughs> yes. ideas and stories travel uh, further and faster than any kind of product or service. So mm -hmm. the solution was very clear. There was only one tiny glitch. The problem was that none of us have any media experience. <laughs> no one knew how what a podcast is or how you create a podcast or how you build um, a video channel or, you know, create written word content, mm -hmm. um, any of that stuff. No one had any relevant experience. Um, and as much as we thought, well, maybe we can hire a team or outsource it and all of that, it was pretty clear that if this is so fundamental to our mission, it wasn't something we could just hand off to right. a third party. Mm -hmm. It was something that we would have to figure it out ourselves. And um, for me personally, you know, that was uh, not only a skill I had uh, and competency that I completely lacked, because mm -hmm. in my previous career, being in technology, being in innovation, you know, media was not part of my skill set. 
but it was an important part of what I had to develop in order to support the mission, mm -hmm. in order to serve our community and um, to keep building upon the capabilities that we needed. Mm -hmm. um, so there were, it was the personal push to say, okay, I've got to develop the skill set, no matter how uncomfortable, right. I am, <laughs> even if it's sort of this, you know, um, completely like uh, gut wrenching feeling, I've got to somehow get over it, develop the skill, put in the practice, mm -hmm. work on it, and do the same thing with the rest of the team. There are so many elements of becoming a media platform that mm -hmm. had to be done. And we had to figure it out ourselves because here we were in the middle of a pandemic with very few resources and a big mission to close the gap. We had to lean on ourselves and yes. we had to figure it out ourselves. But it wasn't just about figuring out a skill or a competency. There was another important element to that, which is um, the discipline that was required to execute on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's not only time consuming, it, it's very, it requires very systematic and sustained effort of the entire team coordinated very, very well to be able to put out a high quality product mm -hmm. and, and come through consistently in a way that your audience can count on it. So right off the bat, we set up this very ambitious goal that we're not only going to launch audio and video series and written content series, but we're going to do that three times a week. I know. Right? <laughs> and, and I still recall sharing that with a few people that have actually been in this business a while. And the first reaction I got from everyone is, are you out of your mind? Most people start off with One a big week. vision and get all <laughs> excited and they might launch it. And even if they commit to one a week, it takes barely three months to give up and sort of start becoming inconsistent mm -hmm. or trailing in the quality of the work. And, but we knew that in order to gain real traction and to um, deliver a message three times a week was essential. And uh, I'm so proud of our entire team, mm -hmm. not only <clears throat> committing to that, really buying into it because they could have disagreed with me and said, well, that's crazy. We don't have the skills. Right. We don't have the time. This isn't even core to our main business. It's, you know, the media part is just 10% of what we do. Mm -hmm. Why would we try to take on something this demanding and this difficult, especially when we have zero background or skills in it? But I'm so proud of our entire team for saying, let's do this. It's mm -hmm. three times a week is what we got to do. We'll figure out what we need to learn. We took training courses. We figured out things. We talked to experts. We had great mentors around us, finally put it all together. And I'm so proud of our team coming through that now as we approach year end, mm -hmm. uh, we have um, exceeded all expectations, stuck to our commitment of, uh, you know, three times a week. Yeah. And um, been able to deliver extraordinary um, content and, you know, democratize access to that knowledge mm -hmm. and brought, you know, interviewed incredible guests um, that are so inspiring and made it happen consistently in a high quality week, week after week after week mm -hmm. without fail. And as a result of that, that is why we've blown you know, all kinds of metrics in terms of success and become a top rated podcast. And today, when I look back and say, gosh, a year later or less than a year later, um, you know, what seems so terrifying and something I had no experience or skill in comes so naturally and so easily now. And it shows you that with focus and sustained commitment, anything is possible. Yes, absolutely. And it is true because now it's like flip on a mic and you're ready to go. And I remember the first time we were doing any kind of podcast or interviews, it was like, oh no, I've got to prep for an hour or two before we do it. And now it's like, okay, give me 10 minutes. I'm ready to go. And, here, <laughs> and it's just like easy peasy. So I think that's fantastic. So um, one of the questions I wanted to ask, because as, as I start reflecting over the year, um, you know, I start pondering and reflecting on certain questions, but I want to know about you as you wrap up the year, what are the questions you ask yourself? Hmm. Um, yeah, so I've been following this method for a long time, for many, many years. And um, I ask myself these three questions. 
Number one, what am I grateful for? And I actually ask myself mm-hmm. this question every week and I document it every mm-hmm. week. And it's really powerful at the end of the year to look back to see how much we're blessed with and just just recognizing, you know, day after day, week after week, how many things uh, we're fortunate to have experience or be. So reflecting on what am I grateful for? Um, number two, what will I leave behind? Mm. You know, what are the things that I leave behind, whether it's an attitude, uh, it's a um, limiting belief, Mm -hmm. um, or it is um, sometimes even a relationship or um, a focus area, whatever that might be. What do I, what will I leave behind that perhaps in some way has, um, that is just time to shed. Mm-hmm. It's just time to shed because until you leave something behind, you can't create room for something new. Mm-hmm. And my third question that I ask myself is, what will I take with me? Mm. What is precious and valuable and meaningful and fulfilling that I want to take with me into the new year? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our, uh, it really helps me clarify what are the most important relationships, uh, what are the most important um, focus areas, uh, what are the skills, um, what mm-hmm. are uh, the um, sometimes even the mindset that mm-hmm. has helped me navigate through so much that I want to make sure I take with me. Mm-hmm. And just the blessings of that. Um, but those three questions, I've found to be so incredibly powerful in getting clear about um, a bit like Marie Kondo, Mm -hmm. right? Like, Mm -hmm. what do you need to clear out and and what do you need to uh, sort of make room for and take with you forward as you move into a whole new space? And I, I know it's a very different approach from a lot of the questions that, you know, sometimes people ask, which is, uh, what did I learn? What could I have done differently? Mm-hmm. You know, um, I choose not to focus on that because I feel like there's an element of regret mm-hmm. in that. When right. You, when you ask yourself, what could I have done differently? Sure, there's some lessons in that, but it also makes you focus on the thing that where the time has already passed. Mm-hmm. And there's a little bit of disappointment or regret in that. Right. So my preference is to ask myself a different question is, you know, what am I grateful for? What will I leave behind? And what will I take with me? Do you want to grow your impact as a change agent who ignites transformation in others, but you don't have a proven step-by-step method? Do you want to grow your visibility and influence as a thought leader to inspire others, but you don't know where to begin? The Beyond Barriers High Performance Executive Coach Certification is designed for experienced leaders who want to grow their impact and influence. Join this exclusive community of high achievers, advance your career as a leader, and experience the joy of helping others grow. Go to imbeyondbarriers.com and register for the webinar to learn more. Mm, those are such insightful, powerful questions. Because I agree with you, you know, why cry over spilt milk? So I love those three questions, and I'm going to adopt them and. Um, you know, ask those to myself. Now, as you know, this it's time for, you know, New Year's, everybody's setting New Year's resolutions. And there's the research out there that has said time and time again, that 92% of people set these New Year's resolutions with so much motivation. And, and then come February, 60 days later, 90, 92% of them have like given up on those New Year's resolution, mm-hmm. uh, resolutions. And only 8% actually keep those goals. Now you're one of those eight percenters because I've seen you do it time and time again. So in planning for 2021, tell us your secret. Do you have a ritual that you follow? What is it? What is it? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I absolutely have a ritual that I've followed now for uh, more than 20 years. Um, It all begins probably in early December where Mm -hmm. um, I start my quest for a word of the year. Mm -hmm. And the question I ask myself is simply, you know, what is the one word that I want the following year to be about that would move me forward or transform my life Mm -hmm. um, in, in a magical way? What is that word? And I don't try to make it an intellectual exercise. I actually just ask myself that question and 
trust my instincts Mm -hmm. and trust that somehow the right word will come to me. And oftentimes, you know, it's uh, as the days go by in December, Mm -hmm. there's different words that just pop up. And, and before I know it, you know, in a couple of weeks, invariably the same word keeps coming up over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I just know that when it's that word that I feel emotionally connected to that feels uplifting and pulls me forward makes me excited about the following year i know it's that word it's that's the word that i'm supposed to adopt for the following year so once i have that word figured out um from there i think about well how does that word apply in different aspects of my life whether Mm -hmm. it is my career my personal life my health um, my, um, business or uh, relationships, what have you, like in every different aspect, how does that work play out? Mm. What is it that, that could translate into, in terms of envisioning the future, the next 12 months from mm-hmm. the lens of that one word. And that then leads me to getting more specific to say, okay, if that was applied, um, in the, in terms of, so let's take it, let's say the word is growth. Mm -hmm. And now I think about what does growth look like in terms of my health? What does growth look like in terms of my career, in terms of my relationship, my friendships, my, uh, what does growth look like in terms of freedom and fulfillment? Mm -hmm. And in each of those, then I start to think about a specific goals at that point to Mm -hmm. say, you know, what is a smart goal, if you will, Mm -hmm. that is meaningful, not just ambitious, not just thinking about something that sounds so fancy and exciting, but you really don't have a big why around it. Mm -hmm. So discovering what is a big why for uh, a goal that has meaning to me against those different dimensions of my life, specifying and documenting it. And Mm -hmm. that's a key part because I go through this exercise of creating a vision board for each of those different areas, Mm -hmm. documenting a specific goal statement, and then clarifying what is my why behind it? What Mm -hmm. is the purpose behind that goal? Because that's what keeps me centered to say, I'm not just seeking this goal for the heck of it and seeking this goal because I have a bigger reason for it. Mm -hmm. And my reason is powerful. Therefore, I know I'll get to that goal. And then The third piece of it is what are the three keystone habits Mm -hmm. that I need to follow through in order to meet that goal. So for example, if, if, um, you know, growth um, related to your uh, career um, translates into some kind of specific achievement, Mm -hmm. then what are the three things you have to do throughout the year? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it is learning some skill, developing a certain skill. Maybe it's developing your network. Maybe Mm -hmm. it's taking on new challenges. What are those keystone habits that you need Mm -hmm. to stay true to that will allow you to make that um, goal possible? Mm -hmm. Then after that, I actually take those keystone habits and I map it on my calendar. Ah, okay. Because unless you allocate time towards something, it's just a wish. Right. The only way to make something possible is to schedule it on your calendar. So I allocate time on my calendar for the entire year. So it's a mm-hmm. recurring sort of reminder to do this week after week dedicated to that one objective. And I map my calendar for the entire year. And a big reason why I do that is oftentimes our calendars are dominated by what someone else's priorities are Mm -hmm. because they take up the time and we are left with the time after they get what they want. Right. This way, you're deciding your time for the entire year Mm -hmm. and you're choosing how you want to invest your time. And then what's left of that is what is available to give uh, for anyone else. And so that focus ensures that what I have determined is important. I'm investing the time Mm -hmm. and I'm committing to it on my calendar. And that's what makes me feel like, okay, I'm ready to kick off this new year. And then instead of just celebrating on New Year's Eve, I celebrate every week. Mm, I love that. And I love what's so simple about it is it's rooted and it's anchored in your one word. Because I know that sometimes I have all of these goals and I write them all down. And then when I sit there and think about what were my goals for the year, 
I can't remember all of them, but if I remember the one word that I've anchored them all, then it kind of like, you know that, okay, this is what's moving me forward. Yeah. And, and because that word has a positive association, mm -hmm. it lifts you up and has an emotional connection to what you really want, as opposed to oftentimes we set new year resolutions and goals from the perspective of I want to fix myself, mm, you know, like right. I need to lose weight or I need to give up this habit or I need to, um, you know, make more money or, uh -huh. you know, start dating again, whatever there is, there's some block that we're trying to fix. Mm -hmm. And when you approach uh, uh, your future from the uh -huh. place of wanting to fix something or fix yourself, that doesn't that's not motivating and mm -hmm. certainly not inspiring and it's very hard to stick to something that you're not even motivated by so yeah. when you flip that to what are you celebrating what is that one word that could make your future even brighter and better um and what is that word that will catapult you forward mm -hmm. then that becomes a very simple thing to remember all year even if your details and your plans and your calendar schedule changes, all you have to do is stay true to that word, stay mm -hmm. true to that one word that's easy to remember. And you know that by in 12 months, you would have moved your life forward in a more meaningful way. Fantastic. So one final question, okay? If we fast forward to December, 2021, a year from now, how would you sum up the year for yourself for Beyond Barriers in just two to three sentences? leaping forward um i would say 12 months from now uh, you know it's um i have no doubt that december 2021 that we will be all tremendously grateful for having the opportunity to do something so meaningful and fulfilling and aligned with our passions and our purpose mm -hmm. and our competencies to be able to serve a global community, to be surrounded by um, an incredible team and have um, advisors that believe in us, have clients that open doors for us, and the opportunity to create such massive impact, um, that's a privilege. And when I think about next December, no doubt about it that we would have taken a giant leap forward and moving towards a vision of mm -hmm. accelerating 1 million women into leadership. That is our big, hairy, audacious goal. And I have no doubt mm -hmm. that next year we'll make, uh, in the next 12 months, we'll make uh, a giant leap towards it. Fantastic. Well, there you have it. Do you have the questions that you should be asking yourself as you reflect over the past year? You have a game plan of identify your word for the year. And then you have this, you know, vision that you're going to set for yourself of describing what your year looked like at the end in December, 2021. So with that, have a joyful, prosperous and growth oriented new year. Thank you for listening to the Beyond Barriers podcast. There are thousands of podcasts out there and we are so grateful that you've chosen to listen to ours. If you enjoyed the show, please tell a friend about it and subscribe to get new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Visit imbeyondbarriers.com where you'll find show notes and links to all resources for each show, including the best way to connect with our guests. See you next episode.